First of all, I think Africa faces an identity crisis. And sometimes we do not seem to accept ourselves for who we are. And if we don't know who we are, then how are we going to find ourselves to see who we're becoming? You see, there are black people everywhere in the world. We're in America, we're in Jamaica, we're in Japan, we're in China, we're in America, and we're in England. But every black person that you find them tag themselves with another country. I'm black British. I'm black American. I'm, I'm Jamaican. I'm African American. I'm this, I'm that. So how many type of black people do we have in this world? That's the question I have for them first. You know, I've been to 17 African countries. I've interviewed a lot of young entrepreneurs and also people who have been in the entrepreneur business for so long. And I've been telling them that Africa is the future. People are saying, I shouldn't say Africa is the future, Africa is now. But the reason why I say Africa is the future is because of both of you. Don't you think both of you makes Africa the future? <laughs> you know, ah, I think they don't know you. Do, do, do you guys know him? I don't have to introduce him. What about this guy? <laughs> Usman, you're laughing a lot today. It seems, d d have you tasted Ghanaian jollof already? Yes, I did. Even this morning. <laughs> hey! Do you know what Ghanaian jollof is? Which one? <laughs> the, the, the fried rice. Ah, no. Ghana, I'm talking about Ghanaian woman, bro. All right. <laughs> no, I mean, that's Ghanaian jollof. Welcome to Ghana, bro. Thank you. Do I have to welcome you to Ghana? Well, we're always welcome. But let me just, you know, um, answer your question uh -huh. by re-asking it again. Africa is the future. No, the future is Africa. Hey, so what does that mean? It's just that Africa has been in the doomed for so long that when you put Africa in a sentence, the answer or the questions that comes out is negative, it's shambles, it's improhibitant, it's not accepted. So we have a hidden future hmm. that we're not supposed to tell the world that Africa is the future, but the world is supposed to find out that the future is Africa. Do you agree with him? Of course, I mean, 100%. Uh, for far too long, this continent has been portrayed differently, not just with people in Africa, but even with outsiders. It's as if there exists a particular brand of Africa mm. that everyone have an idea about and they tend to censor us only within it. So it is high time for us to see and show the world mm -hmm. a different image. Absolutely. And this image of Africa is the future for the world because whether we accept it or not, everyone across the world is going to run to Africa in order to survive. I mean, this is just an intro, which means that this video is going to be good. I mean, it's all right. Let me know, Osman, you're from the Gambia. Yes. I mean, what happened to you? All of a sudden, I saw you everywhere. How did, did it happen, bro? I mean, uh, thank you so much for that brilliant question. Osman is a young Gambian. Mm -hmm. I'm a student, and I believe myself to be a young scholar. So I share my perspective online and people tend to appreciate it through the black set. Oh, Juliet the black set. Exactly. And how did you meet this guy? And I mean, this guy is wanted in Ghana. You should have met me before him, man. <laughs> <laughs> how do you I meet mean, him? I mean, that is what happened when you have great brains out there. Oh. People tend to connect because we are good at doing things at an individual level, but it is high time for us to connect the dot all over the continent. He is an individual who could lead that genuine revolution that Africa needs in order to be there. I mean, I've been online looking into, you know, perspectives, what he has been doing. As an individual, his personality fits, but not only that, he have a track record of what development ought to be in the Africa that we all desire. Jacob Caesar, are you planning to start a revolution? Well, revolution, it's practically not started. Revolution is sensed as an opportunity of changes. So it's time that we change our perspective for living, our mindset 
for developing. And it's time that we retrieve the culture that we have lost to foreigners. We see, we look at the Western to have a traditional culture. When we have a culture that we're supposed to build a system that envelope and control the economy, the systems, the development of our own nations, but yet we're always looking elsewhere, thinking that our culture is going to come from there, thinking that our help is going to come from there, thinking that our investment is going to come from somewhere else. Why do you sit on a gold mine and still look for gold? <laughs> Why do you sit on a gold mine and still look for it? You're sitting on it. You don't have to be looking for people to come and show you that this is gold. This is oil. This is maize. This is that. Africa is blessed. It's blessed with different resources, different commodities, different stuff to be able to build our own sustainable economy and create a curriculum balance in our own economy, have a great state governance that will raise humanity with a different dimension. Africa is the UN. Africa is the only continent on this planet that you can have a white person as an African, a Chinese person as an African, an Indian person as an African, a black person as an African, Egyptian, Israeli, uh, you name it. We are the real United Nations. But yet, everybody is talking about unity. We can't unite ourselves with 10,000 different dialects. That's not going to work. The only way we're going to be able to unite ourselves is to be able to turn our own resources, our own minerals, into production, into manufacturing, and industrialize our resources, our own commodities, and then start to build economy that will make us become sustainable with the global economy. If this is not happening now, then what is the problem of Africa? I mean, Point it out, look at education, look at leadership, look at the politics on the ground. These are all things that we need to revolutionize in order for us to get to where we all desire. I mean, it starts with what we learn in school, it starts with what we get in our heads. From there to the people that we should use as a reference point. Who are those Africans that are bold enough to stand and say, this is the continent, this is what we stand, these are the people we represent, and they see development for us. These are things that we do not see and things need to change from the education system, from the leadership and again, the models of development that we need to adapt. Many things have failed. In fact, this continent at some point is looked into as an experiment ground and that is why when policies failed here, you know, it is worse for us, it is bad for us, but then people learn from it. They develop in the outside and we start to lose. So what we really need now is to make sure that we have the quality education in the school system, we have people with good leadership credentials, potentials, criteria in offices, but people with vision. Politics is not an entity where people just jump into to enrich themselves. I mean, people need to have a good track record in development. This is what I've been doing for a community. This is what I've registered for my people, for my country. And then. We look at a continental unity, as he said. I mean, we have almost everybody in Africa mm. with all kind of colors and etc. We welcome in every individual. But then there is the need for us to promote a continental interest. And that cannot be done in the absence of trade. That cannot be done in the absence of industrialization. That cannot be done in the absence of grassroots development. So we need to have a context, and that should be the central debate of the continent now. Freedom, what do you think is the problem of this continent? Well, I mean, he's touched on all the bases. Um, problems, we came to meet. Problems, we're going to leave. Problems will still be there. But the greatest people in this world are some of the people that found a solution to the biggest problems in this world, because they moved a million foot forward. They change people's life overnight. They change communities, they change cities, they change countries, and then they hit a continent. You see, I respect the Western for one thing. For whatever resources that they came to extract from our continent, mm. they did not put it in their pockets. They went to build their countries with it. And so they built the life of their great, great grandchildren for the next 200 years. They have a system, they have a political system, a democratic system that is constituted in, in within their countries, mm. and that protects them. That gives them benefits. That gives them incentives. We on the other hand, doesn't have the opportunity to go to another man's country to steal their gold, their oil, and come and build our continent. We already have the resources, but we haven't been able to acquire 
And that is what I want to know. Why is it that we've not been able? But uh, that's what I'm coming to. We haven't been able to acquire the world to work for us. We only bring the world to come and take from us. You see, there's a difference in wanting and needing. I don't know if Africa wants or needs. Because if it's them wanting, they already have. They have enough resources mm. to survive. Mm. But there is something they need to make the resources become refinable, to become, you know, repackaged, to become uh, manufactured again. That is the energy to be able to put plants, to be able to manufacture, create hubs, industrialization, petrochemical glasters, to, to recycle your own petrochemicals and create energy to sustain your industrial development. For me, I call this education. Some people might call it work, but you don't need to go to university to get degrees to survive. You need to really learn what is around your surrounding, how you can make the best out of it. That is education. Africans need to be educated by their own resources, by their own tradition, by their own culture, by their own state governance. It shouldn't be from the Western. It shouldn't be from Asia. It shouldn't be from anywhere else. If anybody visited Africa, it's because they are coming to congratulate us for how well we have built our nations and our continent, not because they found out that there's gold and oil here, so they're coming to take their share. This is the change that we are asking for the youth of today. This is the revolutional movement we're talking about. We don't have a fight with anybody. We don't, we're not fighting with our fathers, with our leaders. We're just saying that, look, we want to change because we're thinking the likes of the Western for the future of our children's children and our race and our culture to be respected. You know, I am tired of hearing Africans always complaining. I always talk about action. And you guys are saying that there should be a change. How are we gonna, I mean, bring that change that we're looking for? What are the steps that you guys wanna take or is that one to be behind the scene? Well, I mean, we will probably not be standing here telling everybody the skills that one needs to use mm. to be able to acquire and apply acquisition and ownership and this and that. But one thing that people should understand from the way we're speaking is that we're not labeled, we're entitled. We know what belongs to us and we know how we can turn that into something else that people will benefit from. Plus, we're saying that we have a voice and the voice is being spoken. We're not hiding, unlike the others who kept quiet. We have one thing that our fathers didn't have and that's courage. We speak what is meant to be told. And these are facts that we're speaking about right now. I mean, um, as oh, said, okay. Know? Leadership in Africa. Do you think young Africans, it's time for young Africans to grab that leadership in Africa? I mean, I, I'm not saying you should go take it, but I mean, I feel like it's time for us to grab it by force. I think you should support it. You see, you've <laughs> answered your own question. <laughs> you've answered your own question. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> like, like you, you just answered your own question. You guys no, no, no. You, you should. Know, um, you should just support the whole African movement, the new African movement, you know? It's exactly, I mean, for a minute. <laughs> so you're already in, in fact. So oh, really? The, I mean, like, oh, okay. you know, what, what we really need now is two central things. Skill set, mindset. Hmm. I mean, if all of us are skillful without having people with mindset to drive Africa from point A to point B, we still have a problem. So the consciousness of the people leading needs to be well in line with the interests of Africa as a whole. Mm. And again, our voters, who are the people who go out there voting election to elect leaders. That is another reason. We have to graduate from the way in which we just want in someone to come because, you know, they came from my tribe. They came from my region. Without, you know, having any interest, without having done anything for the past, for the interest of the people. And that is why I said, Education is key in whatever that we are to do. Okay. We have to have that conscious mind as Africans to understand that we need to trust people with our future. And to trust people with our future, they need to show us histories, tracks of what they've been doing. And one thing that we need to understand, today we have youths across the continent that are unapologetic to say we are Africans and we are proud of who we are. Yeah. True. So it is high time that we empower those youths with that mindset that they have, with that 
vision that they have, with those ideas that they have, with the belief and interest and faith for the continent in order to occupy those public offices, in order to be in leadership positions, because the political will is always important. We can't do without having been able to make decisions. Let's talk about investment in Africa. Um, do you think it's time for Africans to invest in Africa? Or do you think, I mean, you have been doing a lot of investment here in Ghana, I don't know about other African countries, but do you think that it's worth it for an African to invest in Africa? You see, it, and this answer will not just be for Africa. Life is about investment and development. Okay? The people that understand life should always know what the money is worth, because that's what they're chasing but it should be about investment and development. Now, when I talk about investment, it comes in different scales. There is investment that you put in the nation, in the people. There is investment that you put on the grounds. There's investment that you put in the water. Every one of these will bring you returns. One of them will give you cash. One of them will give you prominence. And one of them will give you state power. Okay, now the question is, it's Africans practicing investment and development, no. Because that is, well, well, because you're asking the question that do you think Africans should invest in Africa? No, they're not practicing investment. The average African is going for education and expecting to get a job. I mean, that's that, the education system that we have. Well, 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 to answer your question, don't you think practically and pragmatically, human beings are not supposed to be forced and pushed into a corner where they think that, I'm going to pay your school fees, go to school, so when you finish your education, you can get a job. Where's the business mind? Without the business mind, where's the investment? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. There's, there's something wrong with our education system. Absolutely, yes. Why do I believe so? Because people think that education is only when you walk into school and apply academic resources. Education comes from natural resources. the natural living as well. Every day, we learn. And you see, people who are going to win and they're going to gain. People who fail are also going to learn. So you still win in life. And people have not taken that very serious, that learning is a procedure that goes in different levels and different stages of our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're educating yourself. You acquire knowledge from that. There are some points you're going to acquire wisdom from that. Some point you're going to educate yourself, not by saying a word, by just listening. They should remember the same words that say silence is the same word that spells listen. So if someone is listening, I want them to be silent and get it right, that education brings wisdom, it brings knowledge, it brings understanding. The moment that you understand a product or a resource, the value of it, you taking someone like Rockefeller, when he understood the opportunity that he can get from just the oil that he was trying to drill, he became the richest man in the world. You take in Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa did not go to university and acquire, acquire degrees, but he realized that the value on the ground as gold, if he can mine as much and turn it to coins, he builds universities out of it, Timbuktu. In yeah. fact, he's the richest man that ever lived and he came from Africa. Yeah. This is a great history for Africans to learn from because this should be in our educational academic syllabus learning about our people and how they became successful. And that's why I started this whole uh, 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 discussion about we always looking up to the Western and not looking up to ourselves. What African buys made in Africa, apart from the food that they think is cheap or free? Anything else from Africa, we're knocking it. Anything that is from black on black, we're knocking it. And you know, people are blaming some Westerners and some white people for destroying Africa when we just have to wake up and stand up to the people who are doing wrong to us, to the people who are not accepting our values, to the people who are not adding value to society and building our continent. This is what we're not being courageous about. For me, all this is part of education. And guess what? Education is the biggest investment and it comes out of development. So that's the equation. Those who are listening, they should get the numbers. That's all we have. We're numbered for days. And whilst we're here, the time that you have invested in us today is the time that you have had us to open our mouths for the entire continent to hear that great minds coming together can give you a degree that you spent eight years to acquire in university just in 30 minutes. I mean, this is like Jay-Z saying that I'm selling your whole life on 9.99. But I'm just saying this very moment, we are sharing wisdom, knowledge, 
courage, you know, things that would make people understand that being black is not a curse, but it's power. We have a lot of young Africans watching us right now, and I want you guys to speak to young Africans. I mean, from the heart. A message to young Africans from the heart. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, thank you so much for that uh, brilliant question. So my message to my brothers, my sisters out there is very simple. We are the generation that needs to fix Africa. We are the generation that has the mandate. So it is now or never. Let us come together, united as one. And from there, we promote a continental agenda. And let me say this, we cannot be one if we don't have something to discuss about. And to have a content of discussion, then development has to be in the center. Investment has to be in the center. Education has to be in the center so that we can be united, fought as, a, as brothers and sisters, get Africa in its right path. And therefore we show the world that we are not the image that they think we are. Well, we are not done. You see, we have an hour interview, yeah. don't worry. First of all, I think Africa faces an identity crisis. And sometimes we do not seem to accept ourselves for who we are. And if we don't know who we are, then how are we going to find ourselves to see who we're becoming? You see, there are black people everywhere in the world. We're in America, we're in Jamaica, we're in Japan, we're in China, we're in America, and we're in England. But every black person that you find them tag themselves with another country. I'm black British. I'm black American. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jamaican. I'm African American. Yeah. I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. So, how many type of black people do we have in this world? That's the question I have for them first. <laughs> That's the first question I want to ask Africans okay. before I share my words with them. So for me, identity crisis is one thing. That How do we build a society together, a nation that would not be disregarded, but would be accepted and respected within this whole global conglomeration? We need to take stance and a position to claim the value of our race back as black. Because it doesn't matter whether you're from Nigeria, Ghana, or Gambia. If you put us in front of the Chinese man, he doesn't know the countries we're from. Exactly. If you put us in front of the American man, he doesn't know. He just knows that we're Africans and we're blacks. Therefore, we only represent one continent and one race. I just don't want you to be gassed. But if there is no one telling you the truth, I'm sharing this truth with you now. As much as your own hates you, all you have is him. Because no matter what you do, you're always going to be seen as a person in front of you. And if he doesn't respect you or if you don't respect him, you both don't have respect for yourselves. And if you don't have value for each other, you both don't have value for the world. So Africa is on a rise because great minds have started to think like this and have accepted truly who we're becoming. And becoming who you are is the only time that you're recognized spiritually, physically, and mentally. And I think that this is the best way for us to get uh, a fundamental mindset development mm. before we even start to develop our, our buildings and our roads and everything. Our mind, our spirit, the value of our race, our culture, and our heritage value should be restored <laughs> first. And to be able to know where we belong to in society. I'm a true African. And I, rep I represent a black man. I will never turn my back on them. There's so many of them have disappointed me. So many of them have let me down. So many of them have turned their back on me. But I decided not to because they're all I have. As much as they don't see me, I see them. And these words that I'm sharing with Africans is because I truly want them to know that the beginning of success comes from genuineness. That genuine thinking that genuine way of giving the best to people. Because quality should be a high intention and a skillful execution. So if you have high intentions for people, you can skillfully execute everything around people. And that's when quality is restored. And quality is value. Value is currency. Currency is the money everybody's chasing. Before we all want to go around chasing money, first of all, we need to build the foundations first. The foundation that will restore a nation is more important than the mindset that will let us go into reclamation. We will be drawn back. We will be set back. The reason why I love what you said so much is that the time is now. Exactly. There is no other time. There is no other day. It is now. 
the future started yesterday. We are already late. So we should see that as the past has become so uh, uh, painful, historic moments, that pain should become the strength that draws us from our weakness and make today the present become a gift. So we can see into the future that what our fathers didn't do, we have to finish it. The dreams that they couldn't actually accomplish, we have to finish those dreams. The mistakes that they did, we have to learn from that. We've had some greatest leaders in Africa. We've had the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, the likes of Gaddafi, the likes of uh, Mansa Musa and Nelson Mandela, and people that even the whole world is looking up to. But yet, we're refusing to adapt these spirits in our forefathers. And we are only trying to find faults amongst ourselves because we have labeled ourselves different. And I would like to end this by saying black British, black American, black Chinese, black whatever, and we don't know who truly we are as black. We're one. And we're the strongest color on this earth. And I say this with courage. Anyone that's listening to me, see, a black man can become Michael Jackson from Michael Jackson to a white man. But becoming a black man again is impossible. And we are the only color that defines the color in the world. Anybody else have a different uh, a, a skin color? It's a black person. The Indian is close to a Chinese man. The Chinese man is close to the white man. The white man is close to whatever, whatever, whatever. We are the only color that differentiate humanity as in different species. And that alone is a warning from God telling us that we are something special. Are we God's chosen one? Of course. You know why? No. You know why we're God's chosen one? Black people are the most disappointing, most perpetrators, most betrayal uh, humanity on this planet. But guess what? We are also the most people that make God feel his existence oh. on this earth. Because we worship him in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. I mean, churches, pastors are becoming the richest. But you know why? <laughs> it's because we have a belief in an omnipotency in creation. But we're also sinners. See, the, the, the real fine-tuned definition of an Adamite is what an African is. I shall not, and I will. <laughs> and I'll go through the pain, and I will go, and I'll <laughs> suffer, and I'll still live, and I'll do it again. But you know, that's all about life. And what I'm saying right now, it's the greatest moment is today. Standing here and us sharing these words with the youth of Africa and letting them understand that this is a new beginning, this is a new Africa. Before I end this video, if both of you had one chance to change something in Africa, what will it be? Education system. And what about you? One chance, I'll go. I'll go with him, that it, but I would define it in a way that I would like to change the mindset of Africans, which is still boils down to education. Okay, the mindset, and I said it already, it's everything. The way you were raised, mm. it's what you become. The habits you inherit in the beginning will make you in the end. So if your educational aesthetics is not good from the beginning, it doesn't matter how much luck you're looking for in this world. Success would always stay far away from you. So we really need to change the mindsets of our people. And that's why we're standing today as the youngest leaders of today, building the new Africa Foundation, the freedom movement, because we're speaking into the youth's mind, that the people who are coming up, the likes of the 10-year-olds, the five-year-olds, the 15-year-olds, who have a few more decades to explore life. I believe my future is in the hands of those people. I don't believe my future is in the hands of an 85-year-old man who has lived future already, cannot build a future for me. He's wise enough to educate me, to take me through his experience and share wisdom with me. But to say that he's going to build my infrastructure, he's going to build this, he's going to build my educational system, this guy is really tired. And I know by the time I'm 85 too, I'll be tired. I probably would not be speaking like this, but I'll have more experience. So it's really time for us to invest in the youth, and the youth needs education the most.